few cultures around the world are able to resist technological progress, but the Himba people in Namibia are one of them. Beautiful and proud women and men. Their photos can be seen on the cover of many publications. Still dressed in animal skins, defy modern society, and continue to live in accordance with their beliefs and traditions. This amazing tribe lives in the north of Namibia, in the province of Keokoland, Kuneni region, and in Angola, on the other side of the Kanuni River. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Himba were subjected to genocide under the leadership of the German general Lothar von Trotha. In the 1980s, the Himba virtually ceased to exist. A severe drought killed 90% of the cattle, so many Himba left the tribe and went to the city of Opuo as refugees. In the 1990s, the Himba tribe started to revive. The Namibian government provides mobile schools for the Himba children. The Himba are the last semi-nomadic people in Namibia. Recently, the Himba tribe has been on everyone's lips due to their interesting traditions, as well as their natural beauty. They recently started allowing visitations from people from the foreign world, and after several stories about them appeared in the world's largest magazines, many people showed interest in visiting their villages. One of the things that attracts the guests is the amazing beauty and extraordinary grace of the Himba women. Many tourists, photographers, and journalists call the Himba women the most beautiful representatives of the African continent. The Himba people are sociable and good-natured. They get along well with tourists and don't mind taking numerous photos with them. In fact, this is something that's nearly impossible to find in modern Africa. Their primitive way of life remained natural for these people, and it's not just for show. The Himba really do live like that. They live a semi-nomadic tribal life on the territory of an almost completely lifeless desert, in conditions of severe shortage of water. Not because they failed to integrate with civilization, but because even today, they prefer to live the way that their ancestors have. Moreover, they don't feel deprived of anything. They don't want the things they've never had. The tribe has managed to maintain their traditional way of life thanks to the harsh desert climate in which the Himba live and their isolation from the outside world. The Himba people breed cattle. In fact, they mostly breed skinny but very easy to handle and tenacious cows of a special breed, which are almost like camels. They can do without water for several weeks. By selling their cattle on rare and special occasions, the Himba earn some money. They also get money from tourists who sometimes buy their simple souvenirs and crafts. They use this money to go into the city to get cornmeal, sugar, and some treats for the children. They don't need clothes, except for maybe plastic slippers, which come in handy in the rocky desert. The main activities of the women in the Himba tribe are milking cows and goats, cooking and looking after children. They can also do more complex work, for example, they carry water or build houses. The Himba people don't use utensils, only gourds which can sometimes be replaced by plastic bottles. Although the Himba don't really use the benefits of civilization, they do use plastic bags to store their jewelry, beads, and bracelets. The women of this tribe do take great care of their looks. The Himba tribe have almost no water. Every drop that can be obtained is carefully preserved for drinking. Using water for washing is out of the question for this tribe. Because water is so scarce, women take smoke baths. Young twigs and leaves of kamifora are laid out on smoldering coals, and the women wait for the smoke to appear. The woman leans over the smoldering, fragrant coals and covers herself with a blanket, beginning to sweat profusely. This allows the body to get perfectly cleansed, disinfected, and acquire a pleasant smell. There is a magic ointment that has been helping the Himba survive since time immemorial. It is this ointment that they owe their famous red skin tone to. It's a mixture of butter churned from the milk of their skinny cows, various vegetable elixirs, and bright red volcanic pumice crushed into the finest powder. The Himba women smear the mixture over their entire body and hair several times a day. The ointment helps maintain the necessary level of hygiene, protects against sunburn and insect bites. The skin becomes red brick in color, which symbolizes blood and blood means life. 
Surprisingly, the skin of the Himba women is absolutely perfect, and they smell quite pleasant, except for the hints of melted butter. The same magic ointment is used as the basis for their traditional hairstyle. Their long dreadlocks, however, are approximately doubled in length by using someone else's hair, usually male, which they most often get from the father of the family. It isn't surprising that when many Europeans first saw the women of this tribe, they recognized them as the most beautiful in the world, given their smooth skin covered in reddish ointment and their hair styled in a bizarre but attractive way. The status and age of the Himba can be determined by their clothing and hairstyle. This is especially true for the female half of the tribe. The Himba women have a unique sense of style. Their slender, tall bodies are covered with short, intricate skirts made of calfskin and decorated with a variety of beads, bracelets, bead necklaces, beads made from ostrich eggshells, copper, and other shells. The total weight of an elderly woman's jewelry can reach several kilograms. Adult women wear a humba on their chest, an ornament made of a large white shell, which is passed from the mother to the daughter. Women in the Himba tribe put beautiful homemade Omahanga bracelets on their ankles, which just don't perform a decorative role, but also a protective function. They protect their legs from the bites of poisonous animals. The men's clothing consists of a loincloth and sandals made from old tires. However, the male population of the tribe increasingly prefers to dress in European clothes. Children also wear loincloths and are occasionally seen wearing t-shirts and shorts. The Himba people resist the outside intrusion into their lives as best they can. They can't write, read, and know little about the world around them. In the 80s and 90s of the 20th century, when the country was at war and there was a severe drought, 90% of the Himba cattle died. The tribe was on the verge of extinction. There were no more than 5,000 left. At the time, many sought help and protection from the Namibian government, which provided the Himba people with humanitarian assistance. Some of the refugees abandoned their traditions at that time. They started wearing European clothes, going to church, and sending their children to schools. But most of the Himba people have returned to their usual way of life, which makes them happy. As civilization continues to encroach on the daily life of these unique people, the risk of extinction of the Himba culture increases. But this process can take decades, as their semi-nomadic life and strong attachment to traditions prevent new trends of the civilized world from taking root. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.